Hello everyone. Today we are going to show you how to solve a 1D transient advection diffusion problem using BTCS or backward time centered space finite difference method. Our objectives are to present a simple 1D transient advection diffusion problem. This problem will be similar to the diffusion problem we have seen earlier because both these problems uh, they fall under parabolic partial differential equation type. We will discretize the domain into five grid spacings. We will consider a single time step and solve the problem using BTCS finite difference method. We will then vary grid spacings and time steps and obtain solutions, more refined solutions. So our problem is shown here in the figure. We have a porous plate and we have a fluid moving through this plate at a convection velocity of 0 0.1 centimeter per second. The length of the porous plate is 1 centimeter. Alpha, which is the thermal diffusivity of the fluid, is 0 0.01 centimeter squared per second. One end of the plate is maintained at 0 degrees Celsius and the other end is maintained at 100 degrees Celsius. The initial temperature inside the plate is given as T in which is equal to 100 times X over L degrees Celsius. So the initial temperatures vary linearly with the length. The 1D advection diffusion equation is given as Ft plus U times Fx equals alpha Fxx and F is a dependent variable and this can represent temperature or concentration etc. And here U is the convection velocity and alpha is the diffusion coefficient. If we consider the, the dependent variable F as temperature we get Tt plus u times tx equals alpha txx are represented in a different way dou t over dou t plus u times dou t over dou x is equal to alpha times dou square t over dou x square. Here the uppercase t represents the temperature and it's a function of x and time. Alpha is called the thermal diffusivity which is equal to k over rho c. And this represents the ter thermal diffusivity of the fluid. K is the thermal conductivity of the fluid in watts per centimeter Kelvin. Rho is the density of the fluid in kilograms per centimeter cube. C is the specific heat capacity of the fluid in joules per kilogram Kelvin. Here the properties, the thermal properties of the, the porous material itself is neglected as we consider those uh, thermal proper properties do not govern um, the advection diffusion problem compared with the thermal properties of the fluid. The exact solution at steady state uh, for this problem is given as T at x comma infinity equals 100 times exponential px over l minus 1 divided by x x exponential power p minus 1 and you can find this equation in standard textbooks. The exact solution for um, transient problem is more complex and uh, it's difficult to solve even analytically so but it's much easier to solve it when you use finite difference method so I haven't uh, produced those equations here. Here p represents the Peclet number which is equal to u times l over alpha and this represents the um, advection term to the diffusion term, the ratio. Uh, coming back to the 1D advection equation which is reproduced here that is tt plus utx equals alpha txx. When we use uh, BTCS or backward time centered space method will discretize the domain as shown here. Here I represents the node location and N represents the time step. Accordingly, 
we get ti n plus 1 minus ti n over delta t equals u times ti plus 1 n plus 1 minus ti minus 1 n plus 1 over 2 delta x which is equal to alpha times ti minus 1 n plus 1 minus 2 times ti n plus 1 plus ti plus 1 n plus 1 over delta x squared. Here we represent tx and txx using center difference approximations. Uh, we can then rearrange this equation as shown in equation 4. If we call c which is equal to u times delta t over delta x as the current or the convection number and d equals alpha times delta t over delta x squared. Here d is the diffusion number. We then get tin plus 1 equals tin minus c over 2 times ti plus 1 n plus 1 minus ti minus 1 n plus 1 plus d times ti minus 1 n plus 1 minus 2 times ti n plus 1 plus ti plus 1 n plus 1 as shown in equation 5. We can simplify this further in the form of equation 6 which is minus c over 2 plus d times ti minus 1 n plus 1 plus 1 plus 2d times ti n plus 1 plus c over 2 minus d times ti plus 1 n plus 1 which is equal to ti n. Equation 6 is the BTCS finite difference approximation of the original equation. You should have noticed that uh, it cannot be this equation 6 cannot be solved explicitly. So we have to use the uh, other methods to solve this equation. So we call this BTCS method as an implicit method. The equations here need to be solved simultaneously as we have unknown temperatures at neighboring points for the same time step. The resulting tridiagonal system of equations can be solved using methods such as Thomas algorithm. The advantage of implicit methods is that these are unconditionally stable. But we have to note that the time and space steps still need to be smaller for accuracy considerations and not uh, stability considerations in general because stability stability doesn't is not applicable for implicit methods in general. The error is of the order of delta t plus the, of the order of delta x square. Now, let us discretize the 1D domain into M or say 5 segments or grid spacings equally spaced as shown below. Note that we know the temperatures at the boundaries that is node 1 and node 6 and these are the boundary conditions. To apply equation 6, we need to consider the interior nodes from node 2 to node 5. So I reproduced equation 6 here and if we let i equals 2, 3, 4 and 5 and n equals 0 for the first time step, equation 6 becomes as shown below in the form of 7, 8, 9 and 10. Here tin and t6n or the BCs for all times and TI0 is the initial condition I see for all nodes, interior nodes. Rearranging the equations 7 to 10, we have a representation as shown here, which can be arranged in a matrix form as shown. Now we can plug in some numbers into those uh, uh, variables in the matrices and vectors. So let delta t equals 0 0.5 seconds and delta x equals L over m, which is equal to 1 over 5, which is equal to 0 0.2 centimeter. D is the diffusion number, 
which is equal to alpha times delta t over delta x square which is equal to 0 0.125 c is the convection or the coulomb number which is equal to u times delta t over delta x which is equal to 0 0.25 in our case the initial conditions are given as t at x comma 0 equals 100 times x over l accordingly for the various x locations we can get the initial temperatures as shown here varying from 0 degree celsius at one boundary to 100 degree celsius at the other boundary in a linear fashion the boundary conditions are fixed though in this case so we have t at 0 comma t equals 0 degree celsius and t at l comma t equals 100 degree celsius now let us substitute these values of c d the initial conditions and the boundary conditions in the matrix we created previously and the numbers are put in here we can simplify this further as shown in the second line So, this matrix can be solved using methods such as uh, Thomas algorithm as we are dealing with the tridiagonal matrix in this case. We can also use iterative methods such as gauss seidel or successive over relaxation methods, etc. When you solve this above equation using Thomas algorithm, for example, we can get uh, the results at time t equals 0 0.5 seconds as 16 degrees celsius for t2 and t3 equals 35.2 degrees celsius t4 equals 55.04 degrees celsius and t5 equals 75.008 degrees celsius likewise you can find the temperatures at these interior nodes at the next time step by choosing n equals 2 and so on we will be presenting graphical results using MATLAB for this case. Using MATLAB or other software, we can develop codes for a general case where the number of grid spacings and time steps can be varied as this year, and we can get solutions accordingly. We can now go back to our MATLAB program. So this is the BTCS. Uh, method code I have written. Um, so the parameters are listed here such as alpha u the total time for example is can, uh, one second. Our interest is for the first time step which is 0 0.5 seconds in this case. The total number of time steps is 2 and the number of segments is 5. The end temperatures are given as boundary conditions uh, as 0 degree celsius and 100 degree celsius so let's run this and then compare our results so for the we have the initial temperatures given here and then for the first time step we have these temperatures 16, 35.2, 55.04 and 75.008 for the interior nodes T2, T3, T4 and T5 and this can be compared to the numbers we, we obtained um, manually or solving this matrix by different other means and they match so now what we can do is we can refine our grid spacings and we can alter our time uh, total time as well let's make it as total time as 10 seconds and the total number of time steps as 20 and then total number of spatial grids as C10. We will run this code once again. And I just want to compare 
with the exact solution at steady state. Maybe at this uh, when time equals 10 seconds, we are not reaching the steady state yet. So we will uh, run it one, uh, one other time, one more time. And let t equals 20 seconds. Total time is 40 seconds. And uh, n x, which is the total number of spatial grids, as 20. Let's run it one more time. And let's compare our results. Now the temperature variation with uh, the distance is getting pretty close. We can perhaps uh, run one more time. So let's let the total time be 100 seconds. And the total number of time steps is 100 again. Uh, number of spatial grids. Yes, let it be. Let it be 100. Let's run this. So now they pretty much match. Since BDCS is an implicit method, we don't have to worry about stability criteria, but we do need to worry about uh, accuracy. So if you want to look at the temperature profile being generated, we can represent it a little bit differently uh, graphically. Let's do that. I will run it one, other, one more time and uh, let's um, Okay, so here at the top uh, left hand side, we have the initial conditions where there's a where the temperatures vary linearly along the length of the plate. On the bottom left hand side, the final conditions, the final temperature profile, where time equals 100 seconds is shown. And at the right hand side, we show the variation of temperature with time. So this will run till we hit uh, time equals 100 seconds. So compared with the diffusion problem, a pure diffusion problem, in a advection diffusion problem, the temperature change can happen quicker in a setup like this. We'll now go back to our uh, MATLAB and we can summarize what we did so far. In this video, we presented a 1D advection diffusion problem we discretized our domain and solved the problem using BTCS fine difference method. We varied the grid spacing and time steps and presented the results graphically using MATLAB. In future videos, we can explore more challenging problems. If you have any questions or comments, please post it. Thanks for watching the video.